today we are going to be looking at pseudocode. So let's look at our learning objectives. So today we are going to learn three pseudocode loops. Then we are going to learn the five key elements to writing a successful pseudocode. So now let's see the first loop. Okay, so loop number one, four to next. So now let's look at an example of a four to next loop. So this is what a 4 to next loop, loop looks like. So look, 4 count equals 1 to 10. The user inputs a number. The code takes the number and adds it to total. And then the code outputs the total. So now let's look at our notes. So it's used when the number of repetitions is known in advance. So before you know, before you write your code, you know how many times you want to go through this loop. And so if you know how many times you're going to go through this loop, you use that loop. So now let's look at loop number two, while, do, and while. So now let's look at our example. So while count is less than 10, do, the user inputs a number, the number is taken and is added to total, and then count equals count plus one, so that's how to control how many times you go through the loop, and then in while, and then output total. So as you can see, there's while, do, and in while. So now let's look at our notes. So, loop may never be performed. Now there's a reason why it may never be performed. Because the condition is checked at the beginning of the loop. So before the loop starts. So if your code before the loop starts does not meet the loop, then you will not run through the loop. Now let's look at loop number three. So repeat until. So now let's look at our example. Repeat, the user, same, same process, inputs a number, total equals total plus one, count equals count plus one, so we can control how many times we go through the loop, count equals ten, until count equals ten. And then we output the total, and there is repeat and until in the code. So now let's look at our notes. So, it's used when the number of repetitions isn't known. So, it's when you do not know how many times you want to go through the loop, and so as you can see may not be known and the condition is checked at the end of the code meaning you will always go through the loop at least once at least once throughout the whole loop now let's look at the five key elements into writing a pseudocode now these are the five key elements you will need to write a successful pseudocode so identify and set variables. In our examples we did not do that but you'll see in the next question how we will set our variables. Now which loop you'll be using? Exit condition, actions inside and outside the loop, so what you want to do outside and inside, and then final output, so what do you want to output? So now let's look at our question and then we'll apply our five key elements into the question. So the question is, if you want to see the question, pause the video after the message. There are 200 people that enter a bank on one day. Each person has 100,000 pounds in their account. At the bank, each one draws a certain amount of money from their account. The bank wants to see if the withdraw is less than or equal to their account. If so, they let the person withdraw the money and then the withdraw is subtracted from their account total. If not, it tells the person that they do not have enough money to for that withdraw. Then they want to see, including the withdrawals that weren't allowed, the average money uh, taken from their account or uh, how, uh, what was withdrawn and they also want to see the average money taken out highest withdrawal, lowest withdrawal and total money taken out and this is included with the withdrawals that weren't allowed so now let's see so now we're setting our variables so the first one we will do there are three answers to this question so the first answer is the four to next so as you can see, we're setting our variables. So this is what the code will look like. For count equals 1 to 200, since there's 200 people, input draw. So the user inputs how much money he wants to draw. Now if the draw is greater than their account, then the code 
will output a message to the uh, to the person or the user that they do not have enough money. Now, if their draw is equal to or less than their, how much money they have in account, then it is minus from their account. So draw is minus from the account. So it's account equals account minus draw. Now, if draw is greater than max, then max equals draw because one, we want to see the highest withdraw. Now, if draw is less than min, which is minimum, because we want to see the lowest withdraw. Now, you can name whatever variables, you can name them whatever you want. In this case, we're using max and min. Now, if total equals to, total equals total plus draw, then next count. And then outside the loop, we put our average, and then we put what we want to execute, which, we, which is the four outputs. Now let's look at our answer too. So while do and while. So now they're very similar. Similar. It's just how we control the loop, how many times we go through it, and for setting our variables. So in, in the four to next one, we set our variable to one, because we're going one to twenty, one to two hundred. Now in this one, because we're using less than, we have to do zero. So in order to allow us to go through the loop 200 times because we're doing 200 is less than zero that means we'll go through the loop 200 times now if we put it less if we put one if we set it to one we would go through the loops 199 times but we have 200 people so then it would not work so now let's see it's very similar how you type out what's inside except there's one difference because next count equals to count equals count plus one. So for this loop, we have to do count equals count plus one, while in the other loop, we did not. And then as you can see, and while, and then our average equals total divided by 200, and then we output average, total, min, and max. So now let's see our third answer. Third and final answer. So there's, you can choose which loop you want, and they're all correct. You can just use whatever loop you feel more comfortable with in order to answer the question. So now let's see, let's set our variables. So count equals 1, max equals 0, minimum. Now minimum, you have to put it to an, a very large number in order to get the smallest because if you put a number one and you put it if number one is less than nine 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 then you will go through the loop now if you set minimum to zero and your lowest number is one it will not save the number one so that's why you must put a very large number so now let's see how we'll do it so repeat and we enter the code for what we are looking for and the draw and the max and the minimum so now let's see what's different in this loop. So the difference is that we have count equals count plus one, like the while do in while loop, but not like the for to next because it does not need one. And then we have the until count equals 200 because we are going through the loop 200 times and we set our count at the beginning to 1. Now if you set it to 0, we would go through the loop 201 times. So that's why we must set it to 200. Or you can, depends how you want to set it. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you have learned something from today's lesson.